Hey, hey, it's Jane A from Your Weight Loss. Hi, everyone. Hopefully you're having a great day so far. Hello, Alicia. Hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about the echo because we're in a new room here. Yeah. And it's quite, it's like, it's empty. You know what I mean? I mean, so is the other room really. Ah, the bed, the bed makes a difference. Apparently. Um, no, the other bed was definitely, the other room was definitely not as like, obviously it's because of the, probably the bed, like there's like le- more, um, objects. This is some serious physics here. Yes. Oh, you know what? I wonder the ceilings are so high in here. Mm, could be that ceiling space, ceiling space, whatever guys, you're going to have to like accept this new office that she has. It's amazing. And we're here for it. She's not going to go in the bedroom and playroom to do the recording. So it is maybe, what it is. maybe I should uh, ask for like a little booth, like just like a little, a little spot where I can go in a padded room. <laughs> Oh my God. Just in the corner. That's what you'll ask your designer. Yeah. (laughs) I'd like to have just a, well, actually you can tell your designer that you record podcasts there. See if there's any like thing, any things that she knows about that, but like, obviously don't like make it a thing, you know? Yeah. 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 Maybe she's like, Oh, if we put this there, that's going to help. Maybe she knows things. I mean, I think she probably does, but I mean, Google probably knows things too. Friggin' Google. You know what, when you, when you speak in the mic, it's really not. You know okay, what I mean? Like it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Um, nothing to worry about for sure. Okay. Um, okay. So we're getting closer and closer to, um, November. Now I should have looked when this is coming out. I think it's actually next week. So we're like kind of on, on par with things. Um, but we're getting closer, closer to our, um, trip together. And I was thinking about it yesterday and I'm like, okay, Lolo, like people are sending us like, um, makeup artists and oh, blowouts. really? Yes. And I was talking to my, uh, to Melissa, my hairstylist. And she was like, yeah. oh my God, she's like, Sh- Toronto shopping is insane. Like way better than Montreal shopping. I was like, you stop it. And I was like, she's like, who are you going with? I'm like, just me and Alicia. She's like, do not just go with a carry on. You will regret this. And I was like, shit. She said, maybe what you guys should do is one, one between the two of you. So you guys can both put your things I really want to shop. Do you really want to shop? I, I don't know. I, I Yes. It's funny because usually I'm the one that really wants to shop. Do you know what would be so fun is like different things. Well, obviously you know? I'm not going to Forever 21 for another $12 white tank top. No. Yeah. Like, I, no, no. Like it would be good if we could find like, ooh, like this is different. Like go shop to Aritzia and like, like just like different styles. Yeah. Like even, even a big Zara. Ooh, boots. 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 Okay. 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 Yeah. So like, imagine if we buy boots, where are we putting these boots? We're not putting them anywhere. We could also bring like a duffel and check it on the way back. A duckel? D- like a, like a bag? Duffel. Duffel. Okay. Sounds like duckel. I was like, uh, a duffel yeah. bag. Yeah. So from the Grosacle. Yeah. And check it on the way back because mm-hmm. it's going to be in our thing on the way there. Not the worst idea you've ever had. <laughs> Not the worst. I don't know what the worst would be. <laughs> uh, no yeah, I- that's an no idea. Ideas. Or we could just bring a suitcase, literally an empty suitcase on the airplane. <laughs> check it to Toronto. Oh my God. I mean, why not? If they lose it, whatever. Yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Let's talk about this. Let's, yeah. Let's think more, but Strategic. I really- strategic. Yes. Um, but I really do want to shop and I really do want to get our makeup done. And like, because on that Friday, it'll be so good. Like we'll be taught, like, it'll just be good. Like a common treat. You know what I mean? Okay. On our way to trackity, we should actually like nail stuff down. Yes. Message these humans. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Did you get more uh, than one recommendation? I did. I did get more than one recommendation. Okay. And I, and I'm just going to put it out there. If you have a business, especially like when it comes to like makeup or hair, we will creep your Instagram. And if we don't like what we see, that's, we're not going to message you. Even if you're like the best of the best, like it is what it is. Right. Like this one girl that she recommended, like one of her makeups were like the whole face was just yellow. And I was like, Nope, not going there. You know what I mean? Like you have to be careful has to be best of the best. You know what I mean? I know. And your Instagram is important. If you are listening to this and you have a business and your Instagram is not amazing, I'm upset by you. I am upset. <laughs> your Instagram is very important to your people that are trying to book you. And then like, if you did hair and then I feel bad because I'm like, hair is, is touchy, you know, because what happens is what if that's what the customer wanted, you know, you're not wrong. 
And then I'm like, why did you do this, you know, awful bridesmaid look to, you know what I mean? And I'm like, I, I don't want that look. I don't want you to think that that look is pretty on me. You know what I mean? Did you talk to them about your extensions? How did they, what did they think about that idea? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it sounded good. Um, yeah. So my hairstylist was like, oh my God, they have like so many blowouts, uh, yeah. salons there that you could go and whatever. Um, so I was like, okay. And they go to shows there. They're like, oh, there's so many like Goldwell blowout salons that like, you know what I mean? I was like, cool, 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 cool. Um, and also like, we're not bad with hair. So like, even if they did like a half ass job, we can full ass, full, full asset ourselves. Yeah. I mean, like I have like three, three moves. It's like Neil in the bedroom. There's three moves, you know, do you want, <laughs> do you want to elaborate on those moves? No. <laughs> But my hair, I like, I can do that one curl. That's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> one curl, tight bun. I feel the same, but it's not because I'm lacking skills. It's because I'm lacking hair. Um, okay. Also, I don't know if I told you this. Someone asked me about my tight bun and they were like, oh, we need a tutorial. And I was like, that's oh, they the did not. funniest thing I've ever heard. You should see the back. She's don't show like, them the back Alicia never and she's like from the front everything looks good I'm like exactly that's how I do my hair but all the time Jose is like oh what's going on back here oh I stopped looking I stopped looking at the back when I was in um Scottsdale I had no one to like do what you always do with the back I was like where's no. Jose like where's I know Jose? there's bad things happening back here oh every time I see it I'm like it just um boggles my mind how you like literally are it's literally like you did not care at all about nope, the back not even like no comb went through the back <laughs> I'm like I'll back, I'll back. but at the end of the day you people want tutorials like you know what I mean I mean um, these are also people that only see me from the front exactly speaking <laughs> of the internet I am seriously considering only fans for my feet seriously considering it I am not even kidding and because someone just sent me this like video of this woman who's on the beach and and she's getting interviewed and he's like tell me how much money you have in the bank account she's like 1 million euros or whatever he's like what do you do she's like she's I sell feet pics on the internet and I was like slow clap like I am sorry you guys but there's literally so many opportunities every day to make money on the internet and I am just I'm ready for it. And I'm like, I don't even care. Even if people are like, oh my God, that's what she does. Damn right. That's what I do. Do you see my life now? Do you see the things I can have because of this? You're just jealous that you didn't do this first. I am seriously considering it. And I know I would have Jeff's support. You think? I think so. I think feet and cellulite ass. I don't care. I'll show you my cellulite ass. <laughs> Jeff will take the pictures if it gives enough money. I feel like the ass is a slippery slope though. What, yeah. where, where do we like, is it just front ass? Is it it's front where, ass is that like, is it front on? Like, is it like just you're, you're standing and there's a picture of your ass. Are you bending? Is there cheeks I can spreading? Bend. I can bend. I can, I can show them what they want. Do we wow. care? Is this bad? What? Just like, do we, do we care that like, yes, they're going to use this sexually. Do I care? Do it like, you know what I mean? Is the question, I mean, what's I my think limit here? Some people care. Yeah. I, so I don't care, like, but we're, you know we're, I mean? we're not caring people. Like we're yeah. people that it's hard to make us care, you know? Yeah. Like I want to not follow society's, um, way of doing things. And I'm okay. like, imagine that, like she makes money because she puts her feet on the internet and people are talking about me at their dinner table. And I could not care less. I'm like, cool. Talk about the fact that I do that. And I'm just going to be living my own life here with the feet money. I wonder how easy it is. I mean, there's only one way to find out, like, you know, exactly. how popular how, can you get? How popular can you get, Alicia? Because there's probably a lot of people that are doing this. I don't want to look back and, uh, you know, regrets, you know, hashtag regrets should have started a year ago. You know what I mean? uh, there's a only year one way to find out. There's only one way to find out. Uh, do I Google OnlyFans start my own page? How do I think how you just, happen? I think you just like download the app and, and there, there's an app. I mean, I'm assuming. Okay, there's an app and all the OnlyFans are- Oh, actually, there. maybe there's not an app because Apple is super strict about what they'll let on their apps. F find that right now. I want to find out right now. Um, yeah, because there was something that they couldn't have Google on their- At the end of the day, I'm like, why doesn't Shannon Ford have an app, like an OnlyFans? She's willing to do whatever to make money. You know what I mean? 
OnlyFans. It's not, it's not the actual OnlyFans though. I think OnlyFans is just a website. Okay. Take it back. Take it back. Okay. All right. Anyway, we can still start you an account. Yeah, we can still. Yeah. And it would start be feet only, fans. only feet only. You know what I mean? Click. Ugly feet. Start Ugly. getting paid for your content. Sign up, join over 2 million content creators and monetize your exclusive content. Exclusivity to my feet. 205 million users. Shut up. 8 billion paid out. Stop. Show and monetize content with your fans on your new platform. Grow your fan base. I mean, Larissa Pippen has OnlyFans. Do you know who Larissa Pippen is? I don't, but every time we talk about OnlyFans, you bring her up. So you're really impressed by this. I mean, it's not impressed. It's just like she was married to Scottie Pippen, maybe the most, one of the most famous basketball players in the whole evolution world. of the world. Okay. He evolution. was with Michael Jordan. Okay. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen together. They played for the Bulls. Okay. They were married for 20 years. She's loaded and still does OnlyFans. I'm telling you, it's the answer. Anyway, I'll just say. Um, okay, I so need to that- tell you that my dish, there's a guy coming to play, to fix my dishwasher. Oh, okay. At 8.30, I told him to come in. So, but we'll just see how that goes. Okay, he can't murder you while you're on the air. Um, This has been like a real heavy uh, disagreement between Neil and I, because he feels like, I should have be in charge of the dishwasher because I'm home because I work from home. Okay. And I was like, I, I see that. But if that was our philosophy, I would be in charge of absolutely everything. Exactly. And even though I'm at home, I'm actually working right now. Yeah, exactly. I think this is like the, one of the hardest parts of working at home. Say, say, but I'm a, I, I don't know. I think we need to like, it, the world wasn't ready for that right? just yet. Like everyone working from home and we don't know what the standards are anymore. Like we don't know what the, like, what, like it's, it's, it's different. It's, it's like different. brand new. I feel, I feel mm-hmm. like it's brand new. Mm-hmm. You're not wrong. You know what I mean? It's brand new culture. Doesn't know how to do this right now. Yeah. And they're just expecting. And then on top of that, we're the ones with the vagina. So like, that's like, you're clearly the first person I'm going to think about. I was going to say, yeah, vagina, but I feel like actually more traditionally appliances are for penises. I see what you're saying, but like home, like you're at home during the day. Apparently vaginas are at home during the day. Like the dishwasher kept it. It's the weirdest thing. It leaks once every month. Okay. So we like keep doing nothing about it because it's just so infrequent. You know what I mean? Exactly. So it leaks again. And Neil goes, but here's the thing. He's surprised every time it's leaked. He's surprised every time. I'm like, why are we still surprised? I'm doing nothing because I I'm I've declared appliances are his full department. Okay. We're still okay. we're still negotiating this. <laughs> um oh my god. Okay. So here's the thing, you guys. Um we're recording a podcast and then oh, what's happening? That what's moment this? that you need lip gloss and there's lip lip stuff right beside you. Yeah, it's like that moment you need a bobby pin and it's right there. Like yeah. it's the best. Or you need a tampon and there's one in your purse. Oh my God. Speaking of tampons. So yesterday I bled to death at the restaurant. Um, like I got into the car and I was like, it's going through my little one piece suit here. <laughs> um, but the reason that happened is because I forgot my tampon at the hairdresser and because it was in the bag with my extensions. Anyways, big story there, but I forgot it. And I was like, I got this, like, I got this. It's going to make it through. Um, and then the only thing I had with me was your dumb earplug in my purse. That's it. That's all I had still <laughs> in my purse for an emergency. Apparently bleeding through everything is still not an emergency enough for me to put that in my vagina because I don't know how. Okay. I don't like it's like a waste of time. Okay. Um, so yeah, that that that's what happened. So you you did di- you made the choice to not use that? Yeah, I made the choice to just bleed, bleed okay. through it. <laughs> yep. Um, because I, I if I take the plug out, which is what was holding everything, and then I put this little tiny earplug in, it's not, it's like having nothing. It expands. Like it goes, Unless, like a I'm going to do a demonstration with a glass of water next time you're at my house. Okay. <laughs> All right. We got to take a picture. <laughs> Ready? Did I take it? I did. Just rebuilding my life over here. One one picture at a time, everyone. Um, So yeah, so I lost all of my pictures, all of my videos. I'm doing good though. Like 
um, emotionally, physically, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's going well. Um, I think it'll just hit when I really need something or really wish I had something. I think there was one thing that I was like, oh man, I wish I had that video to post right now and I, no videos. Um, okay, here's the thing. Someone sent me this message and they want us to do a podcast on it. Okay. She said, hello. hello. Uh, me and my friends are vivid. Is that a thing? Followers. I'm just inventing words as I go. It, it, it is a word. It, sound, that's it sounds word. like that, but the word yeah. I'm trying for, it's like, sound. it sounds like that. You know how I do things. Um, uh, so anyways, avid. 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 There you avid. Go. <laughs> Vivid avid <laughs> um, follower. And we were talking about something that we're like, oh man, I wish that we would have um, Jose and Alicia's opinion. So she said, I am 24 years old. And a lot of my friends are all the same age and we're starting to date. And we, we do, we're talking about the fact that when we start dating, we all gain weight. So the weight gain part of dating and having that conversation about that. And I was like, mm, there's, I'm like, that's awesome. Yes. I want to talk about this with Alicia. So I didn't warn you about this topic because I didn't want you to think about it first, but I didn't really think about it either. Um, I'm just, there's a lot to it because it's like, there's compromise that is now new in your life because you were alone and doing whatever the fuck you wanted to do. And now you have like a, you're trying to create a relationship, which means compromising. Okay. And then there's building, building kind of a routine together. Um, and then there's just like, are we like in a relationship or we're just going out a lot? Yeah. You know, like, so there's a lot here. So maybe we could like hit both. Yeah. Cause I, I think of like often when people get in a relationship and it's like an actual relationship, they get like that comfort and it's like, it's called like happiness pounds or something like that. It's really common for people when they get into relationship and they just like are all snuggly at home on the couch and they're feeling all like, <laughs> would you, are you a snuggler? Um, Jeff is, I'm just like, I'm, I'm very much like, everyone leave me alone. And you know I mean, <laughs> that's, that's my mood right now. <laughs> I'm going to go with no, no. <laughs> yes, exactly. No. Does um, Jeff want to snuggle even when he doesn't want to have sex though? Like on the couch uh, or just no, in bed? A... Like, is, are there any times oh, that no. he wants? No, absolutely no. not. No, absolutely not. No snuggling okay. in the, in the bed. Okay. No, I read, you read, give kiss. Good night. This is the line. Yeah, exactly. No, I don't think we want, if they're snuggling, there's sex for sure. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. so Jeff is more of a sexer than a snuggler then. <laughs> oh, at 1 million percent. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel like maybe all men would be. No, I know. That's, I wonder that's generalizing, that. but guys, if you're listening to this podcast, do you snuggle with your partner without your partner trying to have sex with you? I want to know that solid question. I want to know that that doesn't happen in my life either. No. Just, so you know, uh, okay. the dishwasher guy's here and I hope he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, when this podcast comes out, you have to like take this thing and then it needs to become like the topic in the, in the Euro weight loss Instagram, like people Got answering, it. you know what Got I mean? It. Got it. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's like good content, easy content. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah. So I'm like, okay, beginning stages. So let's say you have a good routine going on. You have your life going on. And then all of a sudden you're going out, there's a lot of drinking and eating. I think maybe that might be the part. There's that one part of just like, it's different for like a few weeks. No? You know what I mean? Like more restaurant, more going out. And I think like, when I think of that, I don't get all weird and anxious and I'm going to gain weight because of the relationship I have with eating out and calorie deficit, calorie surplus. Like I don't, I know how to adjust the rest of my life and day <laughs> if ever I were to go out a lot so I think there's still that like there's still that diet mentality there's still that like oh my god going out means I'm gaining weight um and I think it's just that people don't change other aspects they don't know how to adjust and the minute life happens like now I'm going out a lot they just like don't know how to adjust so that the calorie intake is adjusted you know what I mean like and we don't like go out of our way and like okay I'll be eating you know, 2000 calories tonight. So that means, but it's just like natural to us, like knowing that we're going to go out means 
it's like a different day. Like we're going to maybe just change a few things during the day and then it's good, you know? Yeah. I think it's the, it's, it's our skills of like, how are we able to do that without drama? Like the thought of that does not worry me at all. And it's our knowledge around calorie deficit, our lack of drama around any particular Eating food out. or restaurants yes. yeah. um, and our ability to adjust. Yeah. I also think a lot of it is how we act on the weekends too. Like we yeah. don't like, oh, it's Saturday. So I'm going to eat like a total yeah. asshole all Saturday. So that allows for like, maybe you go on a date on a Thursday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm okay, hoping so that 24 year olds though, if they're not dating, they're going out and doing other th- really fun things. I hope so too as well. Yeah. And then let's talk about like, okay, you will go from single to couple. Okay. That's a different conversation because now we have another human who has different opinions, different ways of doing things. And now it's the whole conversation of like authenticity, being you kind of creating a routine, coexisting, and also like societal pressure of like, you should be eating the same thing as your partner. And you should be like doing the same things. Like, I feel like even one of our members is young. She's not married yet. And she said my whole, like she has been with her partner for a long time. And we were talking and she said, like, just fall, being a part of your weight loss has allowed me to like really be able to live my life so differently than before. She's like, before I was like, oh, we have to like sit, eat at the same time and sit together. And he was a macro counter. So she felt like she needed to be a macro counter and then whatever. And she's like, now I'm like, I'm not even home when he eats. Cause he likes to eat at five. I like to eat at six, six 30. She's like, it's, and I realized like, it's going to be okay. <laughs> like, you know, I sit in front of the TV and eat supper and we eat like he's, he's already eaten. And it's not like, it's like, we're a bad couple because we're not eating together. So there's like societal pressure of like what a couple should look like, especially at the beginning of like, you should be doing that. I should be doing this. I should be cooking for you because I'm, I think woman. too, when you're um, younger, you're just so much more vulnerable and I, I, I think a lot of women, when they first get in relationships, tend to almost mold themselves to be who their partner is. There's try, they're trying to like appease their partner, you know? So like you said, like if they're a bodybuilder, all of a sudden they start eating like a bodybuilder or counting their macros or they're now they're a vegan or now they eat McDonald's all the time or whatever. But it, it and obviously you're your environment is going to impact and and you are going to change as a human, like with new humans in your life. But it's just important that you really stay true to yourself while you're creating this life with another human. Yeah. And I think that, you know, there's just these beliefs that you have to like almost mold into one with your partner. Like we like the same things. We eat at the same time. We like the same food, we, whatever. And we think that that's like the answer to, um, you know, happiness and, and, a, a, a marriage or whatever, a relationship working. And it really is about being able to coexist and it's not coexisting. It's more than that, but you get what I mean? Like, as in like to be able to be yourself in an environment that another person that's really important to you accepts as well. Like I, I think that's way more, um, it's going to pay off in your relationship. If you can be yourself more than just like be who the the other person wants you to be. And like, if you think about it, it, do you, how many men do you think mold to be more like their female partner? I was just going to say, I was just going to say, I think that like, it's also societal pressure that the female needs to kind of like find mesh herself or like put herself in this role of like, I am now the girlfriend, I'm the wife. And I, so I just feel like I should be home for supper. This is the, this is what it's like to be a girlfriend. You yeah. know what I mean? And uh, it really does not have to be like that. No. Um, I actually got an interesting question for question of the day. So I'm working on November question of the day right now. And I collected a bunch of questions. Um, and one of them said, my husband or partner, whatever, doesn't believe in having bad or junk food in the house. And I, because of this, I'm finding myself, I'm going at lunchtime and purchasing like a bunch of food and I'm eating past hunger. And she'd said, it's not that I'm not allowed. He just doesn't believe in it. And I, and my response back is going to be, but what do you believe? Yeah. Why is his opinion the winner? Why is his opinion the one we're going with? Like, and so, oh yeah, oh, I had a lot to say in that right there. You know what it made me think almost like, oh my God. Huh? Um, you, you know what it made me think almost like when 
you grow up in a household where my mom doesn't want junk food in the house, how that usually that child or that teenager goes out of their way to cons over consume in other people's houses or once they're in university, they go crazy. Um, now I'm like, this is your own home and you're a grown ass adult. Speak up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I understand that if you're in your parents' home, maybe you didn't have that opportunity to say anything, but like, in my mind, I'm like, I don't, I, I don't like when like one person wins. Like, I'm like, I feel like both of us should be able to express. 100%. Uh, even yeah. sometimes I reflect on myself and I say, this is my opinion. This is Neil's opinion. Why is my opinion? Right. I mean, most of the time it is right, but like, yeah, you can't. Yeah, exactly. I can't just be the boss. So anyways, I, you know, I was really thinking for her that issue or that decision is creating a scarcity mindset around food like that for her. Yeah. And that's what's imagine if they have kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm that. such a huge advocate of exposing your children to the, that highly palatable, um, like literally nutrient deficient, highly processed food. I really am. Like I just said those words out loud. Um, and I really value my kids eating nutrient dense minimally processed food, but like I for sure had a scarcity mindset as a kid around that stuff. And I want my children to experience what it feels like to feel they ate too many Timbits and they feel yucky. You know, those kids who don't have any sugar, do you see them at the birthday party? What are they doing? Yeah. They're literally standing over the table, just eating. Yeah. I like know. literally I've seen it with my eyes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I just, yeah. And, and for, to what end, like, what are we, what, are, what does that mean? I have so much, I was talking to, um, a mom and she was like, she, apparently the daycare was like, you're putting too much food in your kid's lunchbox. Okay. And she was like, she just comes back with it. Like, I just want to make sure she has like choices. You know what yeah. I mean? I was like, and in my mind, I'm like, I just like, don't want anyone commenting anything on a lunchbox. Merci. And she's like, it's not like I like, put, and she's like, say day three. And she's trying to like convince me that it's okay. I'm like, oh, if you knew my opinion, like for sure, I don't care if it was all junk, junk. And then we talked about junk, right? I'm just saying it because like people will understand not fruit and not vegetables. And she's like trying to convince me that she's like this great mom that puts so much fruits and vegetables. And like, it like that, that, that doesn't matter. I'm like, the whole point of this is no one should be commenting on your child's lunch box. And the next thing she's like, it's not like I'm putting junk in her lunch box. And I'm like, what is junk? And I asked her that she's like, I don't like a Kit Kat bar. And I'm like, even if you did put a Kit Kat bar, like you are the parent, you like, like why does the why is this daycare worker <laughs> commenting like in my mind I'm like why is this teacher saying that why is this neighbor saying that like you are like it's a more like why is society in general commenting on a lunchbox on a kid's lunchbox you know yeah I totally agree I think that the sometimes the daycare wants that because they think that the kids are going to get all hyped up on sugar is the reason why it's their be connected with their behavior. Um, now th this is why I think that started that, that whole, like, cause that's something that I've experienced before in the past. I've been in a situation where a teacher is talking about what should or should not be in my child's lunchbox. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm a person who puts all the good things. There's also a frigging Kit Kat in a, uh, uh, mini Kit Kat and my kids lunch pretty much every single day as well. Anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, Ooh, do not tell me what to put in my kids lunch. Like I did not appreciate that. Yeah, I just, I, I don't see how they think that it is any of their business. I don't know for me, it's like, and on top of that, like not even like, so what they're eating, just all general, like you're, they're lucky. Everyone's lucky. We're just all eating. Like in my mind, I'm like, we're, we're just putting food. Like I'm just surviving here and creating a lunch. I know? just like put, I just put myself in the, the shoes of another mom who maybe cannot afford a lot of things or their children are super picky eaters. And the only thing that they'll eat is this one thing in their lunch. Yeah. Imagine already you have like maybe guilt, you have fear, mm -hmm. you have concerns. Yeah. And then on yeah. top of that, someone else yeah. is telling you like, yeah. I, I'm sorry, that is like not okay. Yeah. There comes a point where it's like, I just want my kid to eat. Like, yeah, I don't care we don't what, all what have the eat. same resources. 
So, yeah, or just beliefs en general. So like, you know, and also like, you don't live with my kid. Jeff was like, what are, what are we going to do next year with Noah? I'm like the same thing we have been doing. <laughs> like, I mean, it doesn't change. He's not going to all of a sudden eat at the cafeteria for lunch. Yeah. So, like, so anyways, it was funny. I'm like, what is the teacher going to say? I'm like, hopefully nothing. What do you mean? It's just his lunch. It's his lunch. She eats her lunch. He eats his lunch as long as he's happy. And he has enough energy to keep going with his day and keep growing. If I give him a bunch of shit, especially at school, I think it's not like the appropriate time here to put all new shit in his lunchbox Absolutely. that he's not going to eat. Like, hot. Cause he's not going to eat and then he'll be really cranky and so hungry. Like we need to make sure that he eats at school. If I want to work on his ability to eat different things, that's going to have to be at home. Like uh, not yeah. at and Even like my kids who eat like so many things, like a sandwich that they'll eat at home, the exact same sandwich will come home untouched in their lunch. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, it's freaking tricky. La. Lunch we- is tri- like, it's like, Oh, my fruit was mushy. That, yeah. yeah. My apple yeah. had a brown spot. My soup like, wasn't that hot. Oh. Like, you know what I mean? So like, it's like, it's, it's something you guys. So like, you just, you just make, you just, if they come back and something was eaten and you're like, did you have a great day? <laughs> That's yeah. pretty much it though. Check. I did my job. Perfect. Today I was making lunches and Neil goes, I don't know how you're motivated to do that. I'm like, I'm not sure this is motivation. <laughs> it's like, you guys need to eat it's necessary oh my god I love it I love that Dia is not at all like Noah so like she's like what's for lunch and I'm like uh pain la viande avec des patates pilées she loves mashed potatoes I go yay we oui, perfect I'm, oh my god I love when she wants to eat the lunch of the day I'm like okay go I was gonna it. say uh how often does she do cafeteria she asked what's what's what it is and yes. then I know her like taste like I'm like oh, I think you'd like that you know what I mean like we definitely she's a mix of Jeff and I there's a lot of things she likes that are like, oh my God, tabre mia. And then also doesn't like a lot of sauce and doesn't. So that's like Jeff's side. Like, you know what I mean? Like she's very simple when it comes to her food. Whereas I'm like, I would like all the different types of sauces, please possible. Um, like she's the type of like, what sauce? Like on her pizza, like doesn't like a lot of, che- not a lot of cheese, not a lot of sauce. Like, you know what I mean? So it's very interesting where I'm like, put all the toppings and all the sauce. So, but she, um, yeah, she's very open to trying like, like if we eat sushi, can I try it? If I were yeah. like, she likes to try all the things, yeah. but um, yeah, no, she eats maybe like once or twice a week. So it's a beaucoup, okay. but like uh, some weeks we're lucky. Like there was a chicken burger the other day. I was like, oh, I think you'll like a chicken burger. She's like, sounds great. So she likes the little potatoes on the side. So I don't uh, know if she eats a lot of it. If she doesn't, I don't see it. Okay. I am. So next year, Alfie will be in middle school. And have access to, lo- yes. And have access to every cafeteria. It's everything. It really changes the game. I'm like, yes. Giving her $10 this morning. That was amazing. I like that. And then she gets her snacks ready. You know what I mean? And even this morning, like I bought a new mango. She's like, I love mango. And the mango was just like, "Eh." like I tried it and I was like, oh, like it's touch and go sometimes. Oh yeah. Mango is tricky. Oh yeah. And I was like, cause the other day I bought one. You buy a mango with skin on it and then peel it yourself. I do. That's commitment. Uh, yeah, it's the best ones though. It's like so when they're fresh, look, I eat right on the compost. <sighs> Anyways, and I um I tried it. I was like, oh, it's not that good. I didn't tell her. And then she's like, oh, let me try a piece. And she's like, ah, oh, you could tell. And I'm like, listen, I'll put like four or five pieces. If by the time you eat them, they're all mushy and yuck. Like, don't eat them. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. Don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but she's she's easy. Um, okay, so I guess back to. <laughs> Back to 24 year olds. Yeah, we, um, that we didn't do a good job living the 24 year old life. We did not. Um, but you know <laughs> what? I, I, I almost relate to that just because, like, with Jeff, like, you know, I started dating him quite young. And, like, let's say, yes, I was 16, but I still had like the 24 year old, like, you do you, I do me from the get go. And, um, like, <laughs> he knew from the get go that I was not going to be his mom. No, like, who, you know, cooks a, a den every Sunday and they have the potatoes and they have the, like, everyone's, you know, doing the thing. There's gravy. Like, where the fuck would I start if I made gravy? Costuvidia. A fucking package. <laughs> no, <Nope>. literally <laughs> a package and water. And then you would make fun of me because I like use a package. You know no, I, mean? I use a package all the time. Did you see that I did that I made an apple crumble the other day? I, I loved it. died. I died. I, loved it. I and you're like, and this is what I made, and I didn't even look at one recipe. Absolutely not. Tell me what you put on it: butter, sugar, oats. Uh yeah, but there's a little bit of um. I thought there must be some sort of a farin. What is farin? 
Farin. <laughs> right now they're screaming. They're screaming. Farin en anglais. Flour. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so a little bit of flour. Sure. I didn't want to put too much. Don't know what that tastes like. I don't know what it does. So I'm like, I feel like there needs to be flour in this because I had talked to my aunt and she's like, you just need a little bit of flour. <laughs> so I just did this and I was like, mix it, mix it, Dia. And then we did white sugar, brown sugar, butter. That was with the crust. And then the apples, I just did uh, the Ed Smith syrup, yeah. cinnamon. Put that, I'm like, should be cooking that first because I feel like that needs to be mush before I put the apple crumble on top. I just with a lot mine. of ice cream, with a lot of ice cream, anything is delicious. Everyone, <laughs> I just cook, I cook mine all at once. All at once. See, I just, I wasn't but sure. It's yeah, all good. Sure. Did you put oats too? Oats in the, the mixture on top oats. Oh yes, yes, yes. Of course. Yeah, yeah. It, with, with the sugar oh, and the, of and the course. flour. <laughs> of course. So much. Literally it's like one apple all crumble. Oh yeah. You can't have too much crumble. That's not a thing. It's not a thing. Thank you for agreeing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Anyways, my mom came over. She's like, the best thing you've ever made. I was like, thank you, miss. I dropped off a piece to my dad. Texted me. What an amazing apple crumble. All right. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Um, and like I said, I that that uh, story was en français. And at the end, I'm like, mon moment popular is it. No, like, <laughs> don't even dare. And then two English people are like, recipe? Question mark. Uh, <laughs> Obviously ignored. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, we need a new series on Instagram. That's <laughs> tell me you're a new follower without telling me you're a new follower. Yeah, so we need that for you. Recipe. Yeah, we do need that for me. That could be a good series, actually. Recipe? Question mark. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I guess for me, it was like just authenticity was a big part. I think the reason why we can be high school sweethearts and actually be where we are today as a couple is like authenticity and and the coexisting part because. We are so different, Jeff and I, and I could have followed like the whole societal way of doing things, but he does not expect the typical wife over here. He knows um, what's so up. He knows what's up. So I think if you're in a new relationship, please make sure that you are being yourself from the get-go. So you're not signing, your your future husband is not signing up for fake you. <laughs> He's signing up for the real you. I think that's really important if you want your marriage to to last you guys uh that was good advice right there okay oh, let's, end with <laughs> let's end with that you need to go get your lashes done in literally five minutes we love you guys we appreciate you please leave a review uh yeah and thank you for listening have a great day everyone bye bye